family. Good evening, friends and virtual visitors. We thank and we praise God for you this evening. Uh, we trust that the Lord is keeping you safe and sustaining you even now during this wintry uh, blast, during this uh, period of winter storms. Uh, we know many of you have experienced power outages and other um, situations beyond your control, but we pray that God would continue to keep you and bless your life do want to encourage you to stick with us for this just short period of time. We're doing an unconventional break from our Finding Time with God Bible study series for adults and uh, invite you to join us this evening as we briefly look to the Word of God. Uh, before we get started, I want to share with you our prayer list and ask that at the time of prayer, you pray along with me. Brother and Sister uh, Maxwell, Sister Sheila Green, Sister Carolyn Williams, Brother James Booker, Mother Vestana Wallace, Mother Valine Fisher, Sister Jada Waters, 
uh, Sister Leslie Williams' sister-in-law, Charlene Jones, due to illness. Sister Christina Smith's two uncles due to illness. Brother Curtis Wilbert recovering from an accident. Sister Tamika Powell. Brother Ladawell Cumbie. Deacon Anthony Eddings, Eddington's brother and family in California. And Brother Melvin Bookman. In, uh, in homegoing uh, section, we have bereavement. We have Sister Fammy Preston passed on Thursday, uh, February the 11th, 2021. Homegoing services are pending. Let's be prayerful for that family. Also, Deacon Worley Walton's brother passed on Saturday, February the 13th, 2021. Homegoing services are pending as well. Please be prayerful for those families as well. Let's pray. God, our Father, we come this evening thanking you uh, for who you are, thanking you that you are the God of the sunshine, the rain, the snow. Uh, Lord, you are even the God of the drought, and we recognize you are even the God of plenty, and we, we just praise your name, for we know that in every season, we still give you thanks, and we thank you for your sustaining power. We thank you for keeping us Thank you for uh, your omniscience and your omnipotence, Lord. Thank you for even your omnipresence that you're right here present with us, even now, wherever we are. And we ask, oh God, that you would forgive us of our sins and our transgressions against you, that you would restore us to right fellowship with you. We pray your blessings on all who are on our prayer list and even, Lord, those unspoken requests that you would meet them at the point of their need. We pray for the Mount Moriah Church at large. We pray uh, for our pastor that you would continue to strengthen and guide him as he leads your people. We pray for all uh, churches who stand open in your name. And then, Master, we pray that uh, you teach us to be thankful, help us to be grateful for all of the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Oh, Lord, we love you and we adore you. Now, as we look to your word, uh, give grace, O oh Lord, even now. Uh, that we might hear what thus said the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I want to invite your attention briefly to Matthew chapter 28, looking at verses 18 through 20. Once again, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. A very familiar passage of scripture. We know it as the Great Commission. Listen to what Jesus says. And Jesus spake, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of of the world or even into the end of the age. Uh, amen. And so I want to talk to you very specifically uh, as we focus our time of study together on Matthew chapter 28 verses 20, the B section or the B part of that verse. And listen to what it says. I just want to reiterate it uh, for you this evening. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I want to talk to you this evening about blessed reassurance. Yes, I said blessed reassurance. Our blessed assurance comes the moment in which we've accepted Christ as Savior. John 5, 24 tells us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's your blessed assurance. But I want to talk to you this evening about some blessed reassurance. And the same one that we trusted to save us is the same one that we trust to sustain us. And he sustains us by the power of his word. His word tells us tonight that we have blessed reassurance. What's that blessed reassurance that, that comes over and over for the child of God. He says, lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world, amen. Well, you know, you know the Calvary story. You know the events leading up to this passage. Uh, Jesus uh, uh, has uh, left the upper room. Uh, Jesus is now 
in the gloomy garden of Gethsemane is where we find our savior. He's in the gloomy garden of Gethsemane. Uh, you know the story. I'm just going to march through the story as quick as I can. He's in the gloomy garden of Gethsemane. He's praying to his father. The scripture records that sweat like uh, great drops of blood ran down. He's praying in great agony uh, because he knows what's ahead. He knows that his hour has come, that the time has come that he must fulfill what he's been, uh, what he's come to earth to fulfill. And that is to serve as the sacrifice and substitute for you and for me because of our sin. And so Jesus knows that Calvary is on the way and he invites Peter, James and John to come with him. He invites them to come with him and join him in an all night prayer session there in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know the story. These guys kept sleeping. They couldn't stay awake. They, they were not focused on, on prayer meeting that night. But Jesus went on and he prayed. He says, Father, if you would allow this cup to pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And so Jesus knows uh, that he's on his way to Calvary. And he's there in the, the gloomy garden of Gethsemane. But then this gloomy garden of Gethsemane prepares him for these glaring grievance hearings. Jesus is going to go from kangaroo court to kangaroo court, three Roman and three Jewish courts. No one would ever find any fault in him. Uh, for there's nothing that you can find fault in our perfect uh, savior and, uh, and our perfect sacrifice. He, he is the lamb. He's the spotless lamb. And so there was never anything that they could find wrong with him in these glaring grievance hearings. He goes from courtroom to courtroom to courtroom. And the conclusion is, is I find no fault in him yet. Our Savior moves from the gloomy garden of Gethsemane to these glaring grievance hearings and his gloomy garden experience prepares him for what's going to happen when he reaches the grounds of Golgotha. Yes, he goes from the gloomy garden of Gethsemane to glaring, grieving, glaring grievance hearings and now he's on the grounds of Golgotha and that's where our Savior is nailed to uh, uh, old rugged cross. He's suspended uh, between uh, heaven and earth. He's, he's there in between two thieves. He's hanging on a tree for you and for me. The scripture says, cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree. He took the curse that we really deserved. He took it for you and for me. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so there, my savior, uh, he, he dies from the third to the ninth hour, from the third to the ninth hour. If we were doing it in our present time, we would say 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. He's there hanging on the cross for you. And he's doing it for me. And he utters seven sayings from the cross. He starts with father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he concludes with father into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And the scripture says, and he gave up the ghost. They didn't take it from him. He gave it up. He shed his blood on Calvary for you and for me. He did not spill it. Spill it would be in an accident. He shed his blood for you and for me. And so our savior is taken down. He's buried. And we know uh, the promise of God's word that he got up that third day morning. So now we move and we know that our stay, Savior hangs around here for 40 more days. So we move from the gloomy garden of Gethsemane to glaring grievance hearings to the grounds of Golgotha. And now we find him in Matthew chapter 28 with the gathering of the group. Who is this group? This group is the 11, the 11 disciples. He's now with the gathering of the group and Jesus uh, is now giving them final instructions before he exits out of uh, this earth, before he, as, it, as my grandfather used to say, takes a taxi cloud back up to glory. Uh, he, 
he, he's with this gathering of his group, giving them final words of admonition, giving them final instructions, giving them their charge, letting them know, brothers and sisters, that we are commissioned by Christ. And so uh, we find uh, here in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, uh, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I want you to see number one in verse 18, a bold revelation. What's that bold revelation in verse 18? You might ask, he says all power. Now this word is not dunamis. That's that, that's that dynamic uh, power. Or we use the word dynamite. That's not dunamis in this text. This is authority. All authority is given. I want you to know this evening that Jesus has all authority. He has authority over sickness and disease. He has authority over poverty and wealth. He has authority over life and death. He controls this world by the fiat or by his command. He has all power. The scripture says all authority. That's that bold revelation. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. But not only do I want you to see the bold revelation in verse 18, look at verses 19 through 28. Look at verses 19 through 28. We have the believer's responsibility. Now in verse 18, I told you about this bold revelation, but in verses 19 through 28, I want you to see the believer's responsibility. What's the believer's responsibility? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. That's the believer's responsibility. What's our responsibility is to go, not remain stagnant, but to go, not wait on uh, the unsaved to come to us, but to go and get them. We are to go. It's, 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 it's a word of action. We are to get up and go. He says, go ye therefore. Not only do I want you to go, but I want you to teach all nations. And notice he says, and baptizing them, that is water baptism here, in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then I want you to make disciples. I want you to share with them, equip them, make sure they know exactly what I taught you and how we act on that today. Uh, we share the word of God with those that we come in come with contact with. In the church, we share uh, not only the good news, but we equip one another so that we might live a life pleasing unto God. Uh, so the admonition is also to make disciples. Uh, they're teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And so we have not only this bold revelation, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, verse 18. We have the believer's responsibility in verses 19 through 20a. But thirdly, in verse uh, 20b, we have that blessed reassurance. What is the blessed reassurance? I'm glad you asked. And lo, I am with you always. That's that blessed reassurance that I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And as you go and carry out my will, I'm going to be right there with you. And he says, amen. I am with you always. That's the blessed reassurance that he is with us. That's his name. Don't you remember? Emmanuel, God with us. Look, look at the verse, verse uh, 20. Look at the B part of that verse. I want you to see, and I'm, I'm almost finished. I want you to see that this is a personal promise. Why is it a personal promise? He says, and lo, I, I, that's personal. That's a personal pronoun. pronoun. Lo, I am with who? You, not just you all. I'm with you. That's personal. It's a personal promise. Doesn't matter what you're going through personally, he's right there with you. He hasn't missed a beat. He knows exactly what you 
are going through. And he says to you tonight, I am with you. Not only is it a personal promise in verse 20b of Matthew chapter 28, but it's a present promise. What makes it a present promise? He's our constant companion. He says, I am with you. Not I was with you, not I will be with you, but I am. That's always, that's a constant companion. That's a present promise. I am with you. So we find in the text a personal promise. It's I and you. We find a present promise. I am with you. It's present. It's always, he's always there. It's not I will be with you or I'm going to try to catch up with you. I am with you. Whatever you're going through, he's right there with you. But I want you to see thirdly that this in the text, we have a permanent promise, a personal promise, a present promise, but we have a permanent promise. What makes this promise so permanent? I am with you. Notice always, not sometimes, not when things are just tough, not when things are great in your life. I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. I'm going to be right there with you, not just now, but all the way through eternity. I am with you always. It's a permanent promise. Lastly, we have in the text a prevailing promise. Well, where do you get that from, a prevailing promise? This verse concludes with a solid declaration of amen. Amen means uh, of a truth. Uh, amen is a way in which we testify to the truth, but amen also means it is so. And as Jesus is on his way out of here, the last thing he tells his people, his, this, this gathering, this, these disciples, he says, and lo, I am with you always. And here's my prevailing promise. Amen. It is so. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you're going through this evening. I don't know what burdens you bear, but I can tell you, the promise of his word, he says, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. It is so. Amen. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we are the better for having come in contact with your word. Lord, speak to someone's heart. Reassure them right now that you're right there with them, that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Do want to encourage your hearts this evening to continue on in your faithfulness toward God. Trust him at all costs. I want to encourage you to uh, remain uh, diligent about uh, wearing your mask. Wear two if you can. Wash your hands and watch your distance. Pray about it. Consult your doctor. Get that vaccine. Amen. Let's take care of one another. Check on somebody this week. Make sure everyone is doing well. Uh, do also want to remind you and congratulate uh, Pastor Smith on the publication of his second book, Managing Ministry Conflict, Christ's Model, as outlined in the book of John. Uh, Pastor Smith has also ordered some books. I know you can get it on Amazon, but for those of you who want uh, uh, to be able to get it in person, um, you, Pastor Smith is ordering some and they should arrive shortly if you are not able to get your copy on Amazon. We'll let you know when they come in so that you can pick them up from the church. Also want to celebrate these upcoming birthdays. February the 18th, we say happy birthday to Brother LaDarwin Cumby. Amen. Happy birthday. February 19th, Brother Charles Wiley and Brother Glenn Williams. Happy birthday to you both. Do want to remind you of the ways in which you can give. Continue to give faithfully. The Lord uh, it's certainly going to continue to bless you. Always know that you can give through Tithely, searching Mount Moriah Dallas. You can also give through Zelle, our online banking platform. Uh, looking for Mount Moriah Dallas, the number one at gmail.com. And you may also give through the P.O. Box, uh, P.O. Box 763-459, Dallas, Texas, 75376. Let's ask God's blessing 
uh, on this evening for not only the offering, but uh, that the Lord, we ask that the Lord would certainly uh, cover us and protect us um, even uh, during this uh, wintry blast. Let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, thank you again for your word that you are always with us. Lord, bless each and every member of the Mount Moriah Church. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Um, bless us in our going out and in our coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. We love you and we adore you and we pray your blessings and we trust you and we thank you even now. Help us to be grateful. Teach us to be grateful for all of the good things you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Yeah. 